In this talk, we're going to explain the main theorem of our paper. We're going to show that next is not in slash poly, is a true statement in a model of the theory V02. Here, next stands for the class of problems that are solvable in non-deterministic exponential time, and slash poly stands for the class of problems that then can be solved by polynomial size circuits. So the goal of the talk is to explain all the components of this theorem and why it is an important one. So the big open problem of complexity theory is to prove some explicit that some explicit problem A is not solvable by polynomial size Boolean circuits, namely that A is not in slash poly. This is one of the big open problems, and it, in particular, it implies P different from NP if A is an NP problem. So ideally, the problem A is a problem in NP, such as the satisfiability problem SAT, and then showing that SAT is not in slash poly would in particular imply that SAT is not solvable in polynomial time. However, proving lower bounds for circuits appears to be even more difficult, and therefore people have taken different approaches to try to, uh, to, to attack this problem. So on the one hand, we can try to enlarge the class NP by, instead of uh, taking SAT, we can take uh, problems that are harder and harder. For example, P-space complete problems or exponential time complete problems and next uh, problems and so on. It so happens that this last class I uh, indicated here at the end of the talk of the line next to the NP uh, can be shown to have problems that are not solvable by polynomial size circuits. But for the other examples, this is not known. So people have tried to do that, enlarging the class and try to get uh, lower bounds. The other approach is to shrink the P slash poly class and stick with NP. So instead of looking at all polynomial size circuits, we would look at all polynomial size circuits of small depth or all polynomial size circuits uh, of some, uh, over some restricted uh, basis of uh, Boolean functions, such as monotone uh, functions, or maybe polynomial size circuits that satisfy the additional restriction of being symmetric, namely invariant under certain group operations. Now, uh, there's a third approach to trying to get to the uh, to the final goal of showing that SAT is not in slash poly, which is to show that a formalization of this statement is consistent with the theory of arithmetic T. T. So this was suggested by Steve Cook and Jan Krajicek in 2007, and in the slides that follow, I'm going to explain what this approach is about. So let's explain the consistency approach to circuit lower bounds. So the first thing we want to do is to formalize the statement that the problem A is not in slash poly. And this would be the quotes in the statement A is not in slash poly, quotes around it. So this will be a first order statement, statement in a first order language uh, of arithmetic. And, and that's the formalization of the statement. The second step will be to show that this statement, which is a formal statement that might be provable or not in some theory, is actually consistent with the theory T, which is equivalent to saying that the statement is true in some model of the theory T, or which is yet equivalent to the statement that the negation of what we want to show, namely A is in P slash poly, that's a negation, is unprovable from the theory T, from the axioms of the theory T. So these three versions of uh, consistency are equivalent by the completeness theorem of uh, first order logic as long as the theory T is a first-order theory, as is usually the case. So it is, should be evident that the stronger the theory T, the stronger the evidence, uh, as long as we prove consistency, the stronger the evidence that A is not in slash poly. For example, if the theory T happened to be the theory of all true statements of arithmetic, the true statements, then, of course, proving consistency with respect to the true statements is actually proving itself that A is not in slash poly. Now, the theories of arithmetic are a hierarchy that uh, have at the bottom right uh, side, this PA stands for piano arithmetic. This is the strongest theory, 
I mean, one of the stronger theories that have been considered for reasoning with uh, natural numbers. Now, computations are statements about natural numbers because we can think of Turing machines as natural numbers and computations, inputs, and computations as natural numbers in the usual uh, arithmetization sets going back together. Now, piano arithmetic is a very strong theory where very, very powerful theorems can be proved. Basically, almost every number theoretic statement, at least elementary ones, are uh, provable in piano arithmetic. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, there is this uh, theory called PV, which stands for Polynomial Verifiable um, Theory. And this was introduced by Steve Cook in the 1970s to formalize the concept of feasible reasoning, polynomial time reasoning. So the idea is that here, the theorems that are provable in PV are those that are um, um, provable with polynomial time computable concepts only. Now within PV and piano arithmetic, there is a full long hierarchy of uh, theories. These are called the theories of bounded arithmetic, which were introduced by Sam Bass. And at the bottom of this hierarchy, there is the theory S12, which stands, it's another version of polynomial time reasoning theory and there is T12 and so on up to T2. And this whole hierarchy corresponds to reasoning within the polynomial time hierarchy. Now, above this hierarchy, there's the hierarchy of the V theories, also introduced by Sam Bass, where V02 still stands for the polynomial hierarchy augmented with some exponential size objects. The theory V12 stands for reasoning for exponential time computations. And in general, the theory V2 stands for reasoning within the exponential time hierarchy. This is already a very, very strong theory that can formalize many concepts of uh, computational complexity. The theory we are going to focus on is the theory V02, which basically corresponds to reasoning within the polynomial time hierarchy, a bit above T2. So before we go on to explain uh, uh, the main theorem and how it is proved, let's uh, discuss slightly a little bit how powerful these theories are. So let's focus on the theory T2, which is uh, the one that is just below V02. So that theory is known to be powerful enough to formalize many concepts of complexity theory. For example, the cook levin theorem saying that satisfiability is NP-complete is formalizable in the theory T2. The Carp Lipton theorem, which says that uh, if NP has polynomial size circuits, then the polynomial time hierarchy collapses to the second level, is also formalizable in the theory T2. The Hasted switching lemma, which is a well, key lemma for proving circuit lower bounds, is also provable in T2. And many other uh, uh, concepts of computational complexity can be formalized and their main properties proved within the theory T2. For example, Rabin test to decide primality can be formalized. This was done by Yerebeck in 2004. T2 can also reason about uh, parallel algorithms for uh, randomized parallel algorithms for perfect matchings. It can even formalize the PCP theorem, as proved by Jan Pick. It can formalize also circuit lower bounds, like a parity doesn't have polynomial size circuits of wanted depth, or click doesn't have polynomial size monoton circuits. Now, about V02, when we want to go to uh, complexity classes that are above the polynomial hierarchy, then we need to go to a class that has uh, exponential size objects, and that's the class, that the theory V02. So there we can show things like um, polynomial hierarchy is included in P-space, which is included in EXP, which is included in NEXP, and this uh, linear... Uh, uh, this, this linear structure of the complexity classes is provable within the theory V02. Another thing V02 can prove, and this follows from our work, is that uh, the bounded halting problem for non-deterministic Turing machines is non-deterministic exponential time complete. So to be precise, the lemma says that there is a non-deterministic exp exponential time machine M0, and that's a standard machine, so that the theory V02 proves that this particular standard machine decides correctly the bounded halting problem for non-deterministic Turing machines. Moreover, it also proves that the language decided by this machine is next to complete under polynomial time reductions. Now, the bounded halting problem, in case you wonder, is the problem of given a non-deterministic machine M, given an input X, and even a time-bound T, given in binary, is it 
true that the machine M has an accepting computation of length T. All right, so this is the strength of these theories. These are pretty strong theories and therefore proving consistency results for them is very meaningful. However, the main problem that uh, we would like to show that NP not in p slash poly is consistent with some theory is, is not even known whether it is consistent with the lowest hierarchy, the, the lowest uh, theory in the hierarchy as one two. So this is an open problem. Should notice that the answer is yes, assuming some uh, non-collapse of the hierarchy because uh, in those cases, we know that the statement is actually true. Now, before we go to our result, uh, there are some previous consistency results. We already mentioned Cook and uh, Krajicek's uh, original work. And in there, that paper, they showed that the NP not in P slash poly is true in a model of S12, but the date only that um, subject to a complexity assumption, which is slightly weaker than the one that uh, we need to actually prove that this is true in the real um, standard model. Now, they also show that if we want to go to a slightly higher theory, like S1, S22, then we can assume that pH is not in P to the NP, and then we get that NP is not in P slash poly, is true in a model of this theory. There's been also some consistency results with respect to fixed polynomial size circuits. For example, and these are unconditional, it was shown by Krajicek and Oliveira that NP doesn't have circuits of size N to the C for any fixity in a model of S12, and this is unconditional. Now, going higher in the hierarchy, like S22, then we, can, uh, we need to get uh, higher complexity classes. And in recent work in 2021, it was shown that uh, for the theory APC2 of approximate uh, counting, which is a very pretty strong theory, but within T2 still, one can show that ZPP to the NP doesn't have fixed size polynomial size circuits. These theorems and the, previous, the ones in the previous slide were shown by the refining the witnessing methods, which is a method that had been used for previous consistency results. But for us, we, we are going to need a new method because if you recall Cannon's theorem, which is that NP to the NP doesn't have circuits of size N to the C, we see that if we want to go to a very strong theory, and because the class seems to increase with the strength of the theory, then we're not going to get meaningful results if we want to get to uh, to a theory that is well beyond NP to the NP. That's because we already know that it doesn't have fixed size polynomial size circuits. So then let's go back to our main result. So the main result is that NEXP is not in P slash poly is true in a model of V02. And again, this is a stronger theory than all the ones that were considered before. On the other hand, NEXP is also a much stronger complexity class or much higher complexity class than was considered before. So let's discuss some minuses and some pluses of this theorem. On the minus side is that, well, we need to use this complexity class next instead of the ones in the polynomial hierarchy that were considered before. Now, you should notice that in the real world, we still don't know whether next has polynomial size circuits. So this is still a meaningful theorem. Now, on the plus side, first of all, is that we managed to get the failure to have polynomial size circuits for the full class P slash poly instead of for fixed size polynomial size circuits, fixed polynomial size, fixed polynomial circuits. Now, another plus is that instead of using theories within the polynomial hierarchy, we now can use the theory V02, which is well above the polynomial hierarchy. And the, th the fourth or last plus is that uh, the statement is unconditional. So we managed to get the best of the of all worlds. We get lower bound that gets full P slash poly. We get the, the highest possible theory within the polynomial hierarchy, and we get an unconditional result. So let's now uh, discuss a bit what the theory is and how to formalize it. So the theory V02 is a two-sorted theory. It has a sort for numbers where we have the zero, we have the successor of X that stands for X plus one. We have addition, multiplication, and the standard operation, like this is the length of X written in binary, for example. We have symbols for polynomial time computable functions, like you have a symbol for the Euclid's, for Euclid's algorithm for greatest common divisor. And the axioms of the theory will say that this uh, function satisfies the usual recurrence uh, that defines Euclid's algorithm. Another example is binary search, which is also, uh, in this case, it's, it's slightly different because it has three number inputs, X, L, and R, but it also has a set kind of input, which is an oracle. 
And this is supposed to mean that X belongs to uh, the interval between L and R in the set Y. And the action will say that binary search satisfies the usual recurrence. Now, as usual, this is a first order theory. So we have quantifiers for numbers and quantifiers for sets. But these sets are not really sets. What they are are numbers that represent sets. And the way we represent sets is by having a membership relation in the language and the axioms that state that this membership relation behaves like a set membership. So it's a first order theory with numbers and sets and finite sets or bounded sets and the membership relation. So here is the formalization of the statement that next is not in p slash poly. You start with the standard and next complete problem, the bounded halting problem, and a machine, a standard machine that decides this standard complete problem. And now, of course, it is equivalent that next is not in p slash poly to the statement that k0 is not in p slash poly. That's why the completeness. And we are going to state this as saying that the standard model of arithmetic uh, satisfies not alpha for every, not alpha to the C for every C. So what is alpha C? So alpha C is the statement that says that there is a circuit that computes, there's a circuit of size N to the C that computes the complete problem on inputs of length N. So on all, on all lengths. For example, or concretely, the statement it says that for every length N, so that stands for the set of lengths, for every length, and for every circuit of size n to the c, and for every, uh, there is a circuit, sorry, of size n to the c, such that for every input of length n, if the circuit says yes on this input, then there is an accepting computation of the standard machine on x. And if the circuit says no on this input, then there is no accepting computation of m0 on x. So this alpha statement says that a circuit of size n to the c computes the complete problem. So the negation says that circuits of size n to the c do not compute the, the complete problem. Now, this is a formalization. And if you look at the quantifier complexity, we see that these are number quantifiers. And here are set quantifiers, set source quantifiers. And we have an existential and we have a universal quantification. There is a slightly better formalization that we want to discuss, which is based on the easy witness lemma which says that, well, not only next not in p slash poly is equivalent to k0 not in p slash poly, but it's also equivalent to k0 not having polynomial size witness circuits. Namely, not only, uh, so, uh, so what is a witness circuit? A witness circuit is a circuit that computes the bits of a witness. Now, next in p slash poly is equivalent to k0 having polynomial size witness circuits. That's of a consequence of the easy witness lemma of Impagliazzo, Kapanets, and Wigderson. And therefore, the negation is that K0 does not have polynomial size witness circuits. And this is going to be formalized with a beta statement, the statement that says that there are witness circuits, says that for every length, there is a circuit that computes the problem, and there is a D that computes the witness. So that for every X of length N, if the circuit says yes, then D computes the witness, and if the circuit says no, then uh, no matter why, uh, it's not going to be an accepting computation. It's not going to be a witness. So this is slightly better because the quantifier complexity is slightly better. The number quantifiers have been reduced by one. So instead of exist y and for all y, we have only for all y. So in that sense, it's a slightly better statement. On the other hand, we don't know the relationship between the two, but what I want to point out is that it's not really essential for our theorem because we're going to show that any formalization of next not in p slash poly, whether the alpha formalization or the beta formalization are, is consistent with V02. Namely, there is a model of V02 M that satisfies not alpha C and not beta C for all C. That's how we say that M models next not in p slash poly. So we're going to say a couple of words on how this is proved. It's based on four steps. Proof by contradiction, you first assume that every model of V02, there is a C that satisfies beta. Let's focus on the beta formalization for the sake of argument, but the same thing will work for the alpha formalization. Now you take a non-standard model of V02 where the pigeonhole principle fails for some non-standard number A. So this number must be non-standard, must be infinite in the model, 
must have infinitely many numbers smaller than itself, than A. And it is known that such models exist by um, one of the main results of proof complexity. So the pigeonhole principle fails in this theory, in one model of this theory. So now we can design a machine that given A as input, guesses and verifies a one-to-one -one map from A to A minus one. And this verification can be proved to be correct in V02. Now, of course, this machine will never accept on standard number A because there is never a one-to-one -one map from A to A minus one, if A is standard. But in the model M where uh, this non-standard A has an injective map from A to A minus one, then this machine is going to accept on a non-standard input. And now finally, we recall the assumption. So what was the assumption? The assumption was that the model satisfies beta. And this means that every next machine has witnesses that are computable by polynomial size circuits. Now look at this next machine N. What are its witnesses? Its witnesses are one-to-one -one maps. So the beta statement says that these one-to-one maps, one -one maps are computable by polynomial size circuits. But we know that this is not possible because uh, it is possible for a next a statement, like the pigeonhole principle is a next statement, but this is not possible for polynomial size circuits. And this is formalized by formalizing induction. So it is known that induction fails for the pigeonhole principle, but holds for polynomial size circuits. The conclusion is that the next machine that guesses and verifies witnesses to the pigeonhole principle or the negation of the pigeonhole principle is not equivalent to polynomial size circuit. So some discussion, uh, besides the consistency result that we just mentioned, we also prove uh, some magnification for the statement of unprovability. So we prove that next is true in next, not in P slash poly is true in some model, but could it be that this statement is actually independent of V02? So namely in some model, it is actually next is included in P slash poly. In other words, could it be that next not in P slash poly is unprovable in V02? Well, what we show is that if it is unprovable in V02, then it is also unprovable in the much stronger theory V12. And this is important because it would set a rasper of program. I encourage uh, the audience or the, uh, I encourage you to go to see the paper for more details on this result. Another discussion is that we focused on next, but the whole theory works also for barely super polynomial time, like non-deterministic time n to the log, 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 log n, any number of logs. And this is based on an easy witness lemma version for barely super polynomial time d to Murray and, and Williams. So there are several open problems in this area, like uh, for example, which theorems of complexity theory can be formalized? And I will just uh, um, flash them here so you can have a look if you want. And I'll stop my talk here. Thanks for listening.